Hey, welcome back to Mitch Ball Grid. My name is Andre. Thanks so much for tuning in. Today, we have another deck dive in the standard format, looking at regular Anarch builds. This is largely a part two, a continuation to last week, in which we basically uh, kind of explored the issue that now Endurance is banned in the standard format. What do Anarchs want to do for the Breaker Suite, for their console slot, let alone what can we do with 10 extra influence? And today, we ended up on a very fun deck to play, more than I thought it might actually be, which is an Alice Merchant deck. This one's called Eat Me Alice, and we're gonna start here with the identity ability. This is Alice Merchant. And Alice reads, the first time a turn you run archives, once the run is successful, the corporation has to discard a card from HQ and it goes straight into the bin. And the cool thing is that triggers before you actually access cards, so you're always going to see immediately what the corp throws away. Now that means they could throw a trap at you that fires from archives, but more often than not, that just means you're going to get some information, let alone you're going to be uh, dismantling HQ. Now, these sort of abilities don't see a lot of play in competitive standard Netrunner, and that's largely because while this is a cute and potentially impactful ability, it kind of requires you to do something, which is run archives consistently, and that's not often a great thing to do. I'll, I'll admit, I'm actually this sort of person too, but if I'm generally trying to sleeve up a competitive Anarch deck, I'll end up with something more like Hoshiko. And I think it's pretty obvious maybe to see why that is. Hoshiko's ability isn't very interesting or exciting, but it is just very consistent. In a Hoshiko get deck, you're going to end up drawing some amount of clickless card draw, and that means you're going to see more of your deck, and you're going to be able to do whatever your game plan is more consistently, because you get to spend less clicks clicking to draw, which is inherently one of the least exciting things in Netrunner, but I guess actually one of the cool things that makes Netrunner different than a lot of card games. And that's the thing is I generally build a deck and I play Hoshiko because I want to find my cards and I want to play my game. And Alice is actually very different. To get any sort of meaningful value from Alice, you have to run archives as opposed to Hoshiko, who just gives you value throughout the game. And as soon as, say, the corporation ices up archives with one piece of ice, maybe it costs us four credits to get through that piece of ice. Is our ability that good or that relevant? And that's kind of the struggle where Alice or even other abilities, I guess, like Omar, it's kind of very similar, albeit Omar does have some other interactions that make sense. You don't see a lot of Alice out there. And so I wanted to build a deck that kind of focuses on Alice, and we're going to focus on two main parts of Alice. And hopefully we can make an Alice deck that makes at least some sort of sense, and maybe not just strictly better as Hoshiko. Admittedly, it usually always is. Now, of course, the first thing we have to talk about here, which is already a hard sell for Alice, is 50 minimum deck size. Anarch as a whole is a bit inconsistent as a faction. They don't have any of those tutor abilities to be able to find cards specifically from their deck the way that uh, Shaper or Criminal can. Uh, so that can be a bit of a problem. Universally across most competitive card games, generally the smaller deck size you have, the better it is for you. There's a huge jump in quality between the best card in your deck and then the 48th, 49th, and 50th card in your deck. So making sure that you can as consistently draw into your best cards really uh, does not encourage you to play as many cards as possible. Now, admittedly, there are some matchups. Maybe you're playing into a lot of Jinteki net damage decks that want to make sure you run out of cards eventually. There's some upside to playing a 50 card deck. But inherently, we're going to have to spend a fair bit of effort kind of offsetting that card, um, that card bloat and making sure that we have enough card draw on the deck so it doesn't feel awful. Now, I mentioned Alice, we're going to attack on two angles. And the first angle is we need to make sure that whenever we're running archives, we're running archives as cheaply as possible, and we're making that as good for us as we can. That ability inherently is a powerful ability. The problem is it might not be worth paying the three to four credits. So firstly, we're on three copies of Botulus. This card solves a lot of the issues that we have inherently with the deck. Firstly, if you can get a Botulus on the Archives Ice, this gets one virus counter a turn. That means probably, depending on the subroutines on the ice, we can end up running Archives at least once a turn relatively cheaply. That's kind of perfect for what we want to do, and three Botulus makes a lot of sense in the deck inherently. It's a very flexible card. This means in a deck that's of 50 cards, we might not be able to find the breaker we need when we need it, so just having the flexibility of the three Botulus solves, again, a couple issues we're running into. For our first influence spend, we're spending four influence on two copies of Simulchip. This card means if the corporation ever trashes the ice with the botches on it, we can at instant speed reinstall it somewhere else, let alone install it sometimes on the corporation's turn so it comes in with more counters even sooner. A very flexible, very powerful card and works with some of our other programs as well, but this is the sort of thing that solves a couple of our problems. This is fantastic. We also have other ways that we get benefits from running once a turn. We're on a single copy of DreamNet, and this is the exact idea of the cards you want in this sort of deck. I think we should probably be on two copies of this. It's a virtual, so there's ways we can find it in our deck, but once this card is down, now the value proposition of running archives, maybe even if it's free, it's not only getting that disruption, but we also get a card back. Of course, DreamNet works on any successful run, and we have to be running a fair bit, but this is one of the best cards you can get down in any deck that wants to be running at least once a turn. Probably should be playing too. Now, another thing we have to keep in mind when playing Alice is that we need to make this sort of disruption as 
powerful and as consistent as possible. And those are generally two very related terms. Forcing the corporation to trash their worst card from hand every three or four turns doesn't end up doing a lot to the game. But this is very similar to the sabotage keyword. If you can sabotage very consistently turn after turn, those sabotage choices become harder and harder. If the corporation has already in last turn thrown out their worst card from HQ, if they have to throw out a card the next turn, they're now choosing from a pool of better and better cards. And eventually, if we can keep this disruption up, the corporation has some really awkward choices where they have to throw out the genuinely good cards in their hand when all they're left is with good cards. So for that reason, we're going to build in other disruption into this deck. Firstly, we're playing two copies of Maw. Again, this is the same idea as last week. I'll find any excuse to play Maw. And Maw works really well in this deck. Coming down, giving you two MU, six credits is a bit expensive, but this means once a turn when we run and access, not archives, and we don't steal our trash, the corporation has to randomly discard a card from hand. So inherently, if we're making sure HQ usually has at least four to maybe three cards in it because we're consistently allicing them down, that means the Maw is going to have a, an easier chance connecting with a good combo piece, let alone an agenda. So these two abilities work really well together. On top of that, we have two copies of Enga. I refuse to stop playing Enga in decks. And when this comes down, you can choose when and if to trigger it. On a turn, you generally want to fire the Alice ability before the Enga ability on the Archives run. Because again, if they have fewer cards in hand, it's harder for them to sabotage intelligently. Admittedly, they might sabotage off the top of R&D if HQ gets really ripe. But still, you're generally okay with that. And these abilities all work really well together. And this is our disruption package. This deck is running very few, like honest, genuine multi-axis. We're in the same sort of camp as we did last week, where we're generally running this like spot disruption as our way to see enough cards to try and win the game. I do think you could consider dropping the Engas or other cards in the deck and playing something like Stargate, and that probably really works still quite well. If you're running archives anyways, Alice enjoys doing that, so it works well with Stargate, but I do think I like the challenge at least of playing Enga and Maw and trying to use that to control the game. It's, it's pretty satisfying. You have to plan your turns out a fair bit better. And then the last angle that we have to make sure we're making Alice work for us is that Alice inherently as an ability is an HQ pressure ability. If the corporation is constantly throwing out their worst cards, generally the cards in HQ are better and accessing them is going to work out better for you. So for three influence, we're playing a single copy of Wake Implant. This means that running HQ, which is generally going to be better for us, is going to get those power counters that we can also use to lock the top of R&D. So all this works together. It's another reason to run HQ. It's not exactly HQ multi-access, which this deck could honestly obviously play as well, but it means that we get more value from doing the thing as well, and then we can lock R&D. We have that ability if and when we need it. You do have to watch out if you're playing Enga and Waken Plan and you've seen the top three cards of the deck and you haven't stolen or trashed anything, the corporation is pretty likely to sabotage off the top of R&D. So just make sure you're triggering these when and if they make sense. They're all generally optional. And that's the basic idea of this Alice deck. We want to be running archives cheaply and make it beneficial for us. We want to make sure we're putting on enough HQ pressure that we can capitalize on the disruption and find the good cards they're not throwing out. And then on top of that, we want to make sure that we're throwing out or forcing the corporation to trash and sabotage as many cards as possible so they can really feel that Alice crunch. And in my testing, this has been absolutely really fun to play. You're getting that disruption. You're running archives. We found a lot of corporations that are down to low hand size lock where they can't spend a whole turn drawing up. And then you have that pressure on multiple servers. And this does a lot of work. It's a lot of fun. And we're going to run through every card inclusion. There's nothing too flashy here. There's a lot of the standard Anarch staples. To start, of course, we have all the bin breakers. We're running two of each. We can get these installed when and if we need them. And while they're not the cheapest to use, they're pretty great. Um, they're still pretty great. Now, sometimes these breakers aren't the cheapest way to break ice in the whole format, but they're generally just good enough. And we have alternate ways to attack ice, whether it's Boschulus or ice destruction. We're only running a single copy of MK Ultra. From my testing, uh, I don't think we're too worried of face checking into too many of the centuries. Again, program destruction is not the biggest uh, worry for us when we can reinstall some of our programs. But if you're playing into a lot of Genteki centuries, personal evolution type thing, you can definitely play two MK Ultra because having one in 50 is definitely a bit of a risk. We're running the three botulists to be able to cheaply break, let alone contest archives. You can move this around with the simul chips. We're on three fermenter, just a phenomenal economy card. Still very good also with the simul chip. The turn that you can crack this, you can go get a botulist and have to install it for free, which is phenomenal, let alone you can just get more fermenters if you need more money. And then we're running two Enga to get that sort of disruption that we very much value. In terms of the events, there's some stuff here that I'm not very proud of. <laughs> it's a bravado. It's a, a way to use three influence that never feels bad, albeit it's not very flashy. It's a lot of economy on a single card. You could consider it an effect like raindrops cut stone, but this generally does more. Admittedly, it is a fair bit of influence. If you find anything in the slot that you like, you could do it. Whether you want to play poison vial, whether you want to play a repost, you can kind of get away with anything in this slot. Bravado is almost never bad. We have a single deuce is wild. Uh, it's just a bit more card draw and a 50 card deck is valuable, let alone this bottom two options are generally the most interesting and they're quite good. 
We have three dirty laundry because we want to running once a turn. We have three moshing to throw out our bin breakers, let alone our steel skin scarrings. Go get a new hand if this hand isn't doing for you. Of course, the steel skin scarrings trigger on damage on the moshings or just on their own. They draw three. That's good enough. And then we have three sure gamble. The hardware package is interesting. We're running 11 pieces of hardware. We have two gachapons, and I think we should be on three in this list. This is the sort of card that gives us that sort of flexibility and allows us to see a bit deeper in our deck. And at instant speed, we can crack this to go find a virtual of which we are running a fair few, or we can go find a program when and if we need it. Getting your icebreakers down for two credits less is generally good enough, but being able to at, at instant speed find a botulist when you need it, let alone a fermenter. And again, I think the best time to crack this is at the end of the corpse turn a lot of times. So your botulist or your fermenter comes in really quickly with two virus counters. Makes this card very, very compelling. I would actually like three as, again, a 50 card deck. This gives us a bit more consistency as inconsistent as the Gachapon machine is. We have three Hippo. This was missing from last week, and this is the card that we get down very cheaply and allows us to destroy a piece of ice. Again, the outermost ice, first time a turn, we break all subroutines. Some of our breakers are not that cheap. It's actually very hard to break high strength, high subroutine code gates or sentries very cheaply. So we're going to have to try and get our hippos down to be able to contest and to make sure that the ice is positioned in a way that things don't get out of control. Hippoing down ice on our archives is actually a really good way to make sure we're running cheaply if we need to, but but making sure you're hippoing intelligently and trashing the ice that you struggle with is a very important skill with these sort of decks. We're on two Maw, Disruption, two MU. It's a bit expensive, but again, it's the card I really like playing. The two Simul Chips for flexibility, the Wake for multi-axis, and we're playing a single copy of Zero. This is a really exciting standard-only card. It might seem intimidating, but a single click and a single net damage gives you two cards and a credit. Now, this is an immense card advantage, but it is card quality. Again, with Anarch, we have a lot of cards that we lose them to net damage, like our bin breakers, let alone our steel skin scarring. We're actually pretty happy. I included one copy, mostly so that we can test it out, because I was worried with a 50 card deck, we'd value anything with the words draw cards on them. And in the matchups that Zero shows up, it's actually quite good. I think playing one of is probably a bit foolish. Maybe we can just play a third Gachapon or a second Dream Net in the slot and we'd be a fair bit happier. But I do think you can lean into a triple Zero engine. Uh, again, a single net damage to draw two and gain a credit is actually very good click compression and it gets you through your deck, which is a very important thing to do. Three daily cast is pretty boring. Five credits or even more with Paladin Puemo. On that note, we're on two Paladin Puemo. It is virtual. We find it with the Gatchbon. We talked about how the Dream Net is sick. Again, probably should be running two. Make sure that our archives runs, let alone our one Maw run a turn, does give us card draw, which we do need card draw on this deck. We're running three Liberated Counts. It is the most money on a single card largely you can play in Anarch. And in a lot of matchups in Standard, just getting enough economy is one of the most important things you can do if you're playing into things like hard-hitting news or acid matchups. Just money solves a lot of your issues. Then, we're spending four influence on two copies of Nuka. You might be obvious that I was really worried that we didn't have enough card draw, so I'm playing two diesels in a single slot for two influence, which is not bad. Nuka's really easy to play, and I think Nuka is very comparable to the very common Earthrise Hotel. Earthrise Hotel gives you the same amount of cards, albeit clicklessly, for four credits, but Nuka, you're going to spend three clicks and a single credit to get six cards. Now, I actually really value not having to spend a lot of money for card draw, especially in the early game. You notice most of our economy cards cost somewhere between three and six credits, I guess two on Dirty Laundry. But making sure that we're never going down too low on credits means that we can always play a top deck liberated account. So I do actually really value this. I think Nuka is actually really interesting in Anarch. If you're playing more things that force you to take core damage or require you to take net damage like zero, uh, this is actually really nice to be able to control when and where you draw as opposed to Earthrise Hotel. I think you could maybe play Earthrise, but you probably want a bit more burst economy. Maybe something like a career fair would take that slot as well, but good card draw is important. And the last card is Light the Fire. I really wish we were playing two of these. Even in a 50 card deck, this ends up getting cut. And let me tell you, Light the Fire seems so attractive anytime it's not in my deck. I think last week we ended up playing into a bunch of decks that had a bunch of assets and upgrades in the same remote server. And being able to take all those eggs down in a single basket is really, really, really enticing. I was actually the most excited to play Light the Fire on its inherent interaction with Spin Doctor. When Light the Fire is just installed on the table, the corporation knows that any moment you could spend a click and a core damage to run a remote server, which means if they have a res spin doctor on the table, they're not going to be able to use any of the text on it. And inherently, with the ability as a Ma and Enga, let alone Alice to some extent, the spin doctors come at a premium. They really want to make sure that they can recur cards against a disruptive deck, let alone a deck that wants to run archives somewhat consistently. So getting down and just putting on the table, even if you've never used them, the Light the Fire sounded very attractive. Unfortunately, I don't think I installed it in any game I played, and admittedly, we're playing one in a 50-card deck, so what can you expect? But I think more testing has to be done. 
I do think what is obvious and you'll see in the upcoming games is the amount of turns that I just wish that we had a pinhole threading instead. This is obviously a very uh, similar card and we have extra influence in this deck that we could end up repositioning. But one of the big differences between pinhole threading and light the fire is pinhole threading means that you don't have to run the remote server. For a deck of 50 cards with only so many breakers, there's a lot of times that we don't have the cards to be able to access the remote server. Yet we know there's a very powerful upgrade or asset in the remote server we'd like to trash. So pinhole threading kind of fits the bill really, really well. And there's a big chance this is what you want to be playing, not like the fire. Also, if you run archives, you get a trigger Alice and then pinhole, which is kind of sick. And that's this list. I was actually really surprised how much fun I was having with this. I really wanted to make sure that when I was playing this, it didn't feel like very obviously would be better as Hoshiko. And I think we largely got there as much as that might actually be an impossible question for a lot of people. The disruption is really fun. It's really important also to understand how a corporation's play around Alice has a huge impact on the, the narrative of the game. If very quickly in the game they put some good ice on archives, that's going to change how much ice is on other central servers, let alone the remote server. So even the hidden behind the scenes stuff that comes into play when playing as or against Alice is really important as much as that can be very difficult to measure. I had a lot of fun playing this deck. Hopefully you do too. Again, if you enjoy these kind of videos, liking the video, uh, leaving a comment, subscribing to the channel, telling a friend, there's all very important ways that very much help the growth of the channel and they'd be greatly appreciated. On that note, enjoy the games. All right, we're playing as an op. Um, this could be anything. Now, op is a very powerful identity. We've seen some really cool archetypes, competitive archetypes on op over the last, uh, basically the year since it's been out, however long it's been. Now, Drago has rotated, so some of the kill combo decks are at least less consistent, but this still just might be good stuff op, um, the sort of like mid-range, find the pieces that you need, defensive upgrades thing. It also could just be hard to use asset base op. Um, so we have to kind of like hedge mulligan against that. Opening hand, we have double botulus, which is not very good. We have our singleton zero, which is nice enough card draw, but I want something a bit more proactive. The paladin liberate is nice enough economy, but this hand's kind of hard to play. We generally do like credit liberated, hit liberated paladin, which is pretty slow. From that point on, maybe we do zero and then just zoom in from there we could do that uh we have one click to run archives which is nice we could probably keep this we don't have access to breakers or gachapon but um at least we have two good setup cards so again ops ability allows them to find something at instant speed um eyes on archives after too big to fail so that's actually a really surprising card we're not expecting to see that we can always face check archives click one and i'm actually kind of okay with that um the worst case scenario is something like something that makes us lose credits uh if it's an anvil, that's the fine time to hit it. But anything else, I think we're okay just to see what this is. I'm worried if they're on too big to fail, they might just hard hitting news us turn one. Okay, so we have bad pub. That's worth knowing. So here we made a run. So we actually have to play around hard hitting news. Um, I think we should have probably expected hard hitting news if they're on too big to fail. So this might be a really short game. So I'm still going to just like hope that they don't have it. Unfortunately, we can't get down to Paladin again. That was probably the downside of running. I think I miscounted my clicks. I thought we could get this down and then also like Paladin which would be nice, but it looks like no hard news. Spin Doctor is the start. Again, Ice Wall, we'll get through that for free uh, with Botulus. We just want to contest the Spin Doctor first, and with bad publicity, we can do it relatively well. We'll get that on there. Uh, this could be a Rashida. That'd be kind of bad. I'm going to contest server one. We didn't get hard news, but I want to get the Spin Doctor down before we get our ability off. And admittedly, this is not the best target for a Botulus, but we have ways to, you know, move the Botulus around. Uh, with simul chips. Eventually, we paperclip this for free with bad publicity. So, this forces them to put another ice here. And the more ice they're spending on, on central servers, the less ice they're spending on doing their thing. So, here we're going to kind of like not worry about hard hitting news and we're just going to uh, get our ability as often as possible. In theory, we could die to punitive on turn two. But Alice, they have to discard a card. They discarded before we access some of virus. That's cool that it's in there. It's fine, considering we'll always be able to run in here and then get purged out. So, it's going to hurt our fermenters, but it's okay with this botulus. Single advance, it's double advance. Do they have three? Another too big to fail, so they have 16 credits. They can risk some of the biggest ice in the format. The question is, can we contest this remote server? Um, I think with the Botulus, there's a chance we can. In terms of the ice we're expecting, if it's an envelopment, that's pretty rough. Um, if it's something like a trebuchet or bad pub stuff, that's okay. I think we can just let them have it. Let's get the zero down. Actually, the Botulus is kind of super useful because it allows us to contest the remote server, but I think we can let them have this agenda potentially. We know it's not an above the law. I think they would have scored that out. So I hit a zero to draw two. We have a steel skin. So in theory, we can get down the simul chip and go from there. So I'm going to just run archives. I'm going to keep our ability as relevant as possible as much as again, we're risking hard hitting news at every single turn. So this is very unsafe. At least we've been safe for the last couple turns. That being said, they can score an Atlas here and then use the Atlas counter to like go get a hard hitting news on the upcoming turn. At least if they do that, they won't have the Atlas counter to go find punishment. So let's see if this is an Atlas with a counter into hard hitting. 
Five three. It's an SDS. I got rid of our botch list. Sick. Okay. So they seem to be on big agendas. Might still be on punitive. You don't see a lot of big agendas here. All right. I'm gonna install the simul chip uh, just to get it down, so we can ensure that we hit that. We could have gone for the fifty fifty here, and we're just gonna keep our aggression up as much as possible. So we need to get our paperclip for this. Um, again, we break this. We have two bad pub. We just need to get our breakers down. Uh, we can probably dream net away this hand if we really wanted to. But I think we also can just dream net hit the top of R and D. Unfortunately, we can't steal more SDSs, but hey, we got a regulatory capture and we kind of probably make, we got to expect this in more decks if we are seeing bad publicity. Currently with two bad pub, this is a four two. And in terms of bad publicity, we have to expect them to also be on things like trebuchet and bulwark, some of the bigger ice. So just finding our breakers is going to be one of the most important thing or our breakers. Because once we have our breakers down, bad pub, you know, it's kind of useful. So I'm just going to try and moshing away this hand. As much as Nuka is card draw, I think we are going to get rid of this hand. So they drew twice. We're only on three credits. Mind you, two bad pub. Arc Lockdown, gonna remove a botulist from the heap. Okay, that's really scary. Those are both of our botulists. So that's a good target with Simul Chip, but that means that they're on just rig shooting. So we have to expect even archers uh, potentially, but obviously Stavka is maybe Stavka half run. And uh, we have Simul Chip, so as long as we just use the Simul Chip on the turn that the program gets destroyed before they can Arc Lockdown, we'll be in an okay spot. Again, we have, so have to trash something, but ideally they trash themselves. Okay, that actually changes stuff here because I don't want to moshing the Black Orchestra if they're on Arc Lockdown. Uh, because then they can remove it from the game. So let's just check by running our D first. Again, we have bad pup to trash stuff. Well, hey, better lucky than good. Uh, do we? I think we actually get the fermenter down. Maybe we have to go slower now that we're on game point. We can go slower. I think we can go slower. Again, I just don't want to discard this. So we definitely need to install stuff with Paladin. Uh, Paladin doesn't allow you to install Nuka because Paladin's for non-connections. So we actually could just install the Black Orchestra. At that point, we're face checking maybe into sentries, into like uh, even ballistas, stuff like that. So if we hit this, we draw three, we'll be on seven cards in hand, and we only have one click left, so we'll have to discard a card. I think we can avoid that. What else can we do here? We can always just like YOLO bravado into central server. There's a big chance that they have uh, trebuchets, which can trash our stuff, which is not good. So maybe we can go a bit slower here with the fermenter. We probably want to draw once. Um, I guess we get the nuka down. We just need to get draw card draw. We have a 50 card deck. We don't have the card draw of things like Hoshiko, so we have to spend more time and more slots on card draw, that's for sure. So we'll get this down as our best economy card. Technically, we have liberated, but uh, we need to use a paladin, so might as well do that for free. All right, next time we can peel out with Nuka again. They might not ice R&D. We don't know what they're drawing because every card we've accessed, we've stolen. Might be hostile. It's just another spin doctor. We trash that for free. So if they don't ice it up, that's just going to be a click tax for us. There's the ice. Again, what they spin doctor back is going to be interesting. Probably a spin doctor. From there, I don't know. They, we have to expect them to be on the Stavka half run combo. And if they don't have res three costers, if they don't have Mavirus, and so far we've seen one Mavirus, um, they have to go. Uh, it'll just be a big old Stavka, which botches don't exactly deal with. So we're going to need our one of MK Ultra. Ice HQ makes sense again. Alice's ability is inherently an HQ pressure ability. All right, let's, uh, I think, do we nuka first? I don't see why not. It's not that we're going to play a run event to run it. Um, if we trash this, we want to show, we kind of want to hide how much money we have before we're doing this. Not that we'd actually have to pay money, but there's no reason to show them that we have more money before they make a decision. Again, it would be free. So in any other board state, let's see what they shuffle back here. Looks like the spin doctor for sure. And the lockdown. So we're just going to play around lockdown. As difficult as that is, right now our goal is to get our breakers on the table. So getting on the orchestra for free is like okay. Um, I think we could consider doing it now. We just don't want to trash it uh, because then it's weak to our lockdown, which we know is somewhere in R and D. There might be on more than one. Our lockdown, mind you, we didn't explain it. It removes cards from the game from the heap. So uh, while these cards can come back over and over again from the heap, that's why you kind of have to deal with them. All right, eleven credits. We could just bravado. I'm worried about trebuchet. I'm worried about some other stuff. I think we can just set up a bit. We can nuka again. I don't really want to zero. Again, we can moshing some of these cards away. It's probably be fine. I think we can just draw once. Install. It'll put us on seven. No, I think we just install this. Just kind of annoying because now we're weak to program destruction. Not that we weren't already. And I think we'll just take money this turn so that we can mass draw next turn. We can always consider moshing this hand because I think we'll do that after the nuke of anything. But like generally the value of moshing is that you can trash your breakers. But against Arc Lockdown. Not the best thing we can do. That being said, with Bad Pub, it's really good to mosh your breakers. Say we mosh a paperclip and then on the same click or same turn, run Ice Wall so we can install it with the Bad Pub and then it's on the table. That would be like the best case. I think we have to watch out for like Trojan Horse potentially and maybe even the home run, wake up call, the home run card. Extract, distract the masses. Okay, so just like Recursion, they installed a card and extracted it. So that was just two clicks for six credits. It's okay. And then Distract the Maxis gave us two credits and they shuffled them a virus and unseen back. So just like kind of recursion, uh, this sort of like unhealthy recursion, you see more in like sort of prison lists, but they have a lot of money. So we have to watch out for punitive. All right, let's just keep drawing through our deck. Light the fire is kind of cool. Um, core damage can be risky. 
We also now have, oh, we have a third botch list. I totally forgot about that. We have a third botch list and the virus is no longer in there. So when we run here, they only have one card in HQ and we can simul chip this around. I think we're definitely going to do that. Uh, I don't think we want a hippo nice wall. I think we want a hippo one of the bigger bad publicity cards. Get this in for one credit. That's nice. We can simul chip that around. So now here, I think there's a chance that we want to deuces wild to, um, we're going to get a card draw here. We'll just bravado it. This is fine enough value. I was going to say maybe we can expose some ice, but we're going to get a card draw here on um, DreamNet, so we'll be in an okay spot. Again, we're not using our bad publicity. Reach server. So they have to throw out. If they have one agenda in hand, it'll be the only agenda in hand, unless they want to give it to us. And this is like where the HQ pressure comes in. We want to run HQ. I like the fact that they double iced. The fact that they threw out, like not that they need the hedge fund, but hedge fund is generally a good card. On 17 credits, they don't need it, but it kind of shows that like they uh, probably have an agenda here. So as long as we can make it look like we can contest their uh, server, we're in an okay spot. So what do we do here? We have way more money than we have anything else. I think we can install the hippo. Even putting down the daily cast would be fine, but we have a lot of money here, a lot of money here. The clickless daily cast, that would probably be totally fine because we're gonna have to install or spend a lot of money installing breakers and breaking some of the bigger ice. Second hedge fund, second ice on archives. Again, it's pretty rare as your ability that you get to double ice archives. So it looks like they're getting respect. The big issue now though is we only have one MK Ultra, So we have to find it. I think we can consider running HQ. If we hit a bulwark, that's the issue. Um, we can move the, uh, what's it called, the botulist to deal with it. I think we're okay with that. I think we have to pressure HQ. Let's start here with some card draw though. Because if we can find a breaker, yeah, we found an MK Ultra. We just get that installed. So in theory, we can break a bulwark. And if we do that, or for this, it wouldn't be a bulwark. It would be uh, like Stavka, stuff like that. Uh, we'd be in an okay spot. All right, we're not really forced to do anything. Um, I think we want to go HQ this turn. There's almost definitely an agenda in there. And if that's an SDS drone deployment, I think we win the game. Now we'll have 13 plus two bad publicity. We have a click left to remove tags. SDS drone deployment, we have the money. We could always crack the fermenter first, but I think with 15 credits, we can always go here. And in a pinch, we can simul chip around the, um, the ice wall. Let's go HQ. I think there's pretty likely an agenda in here and a bigger one. No further actions. So they're playing around hippo. That's smart. Let's see if they read something huge here. Again, if it's a bulwark, uh, we can move around our simul chip, but they probably want to consider resing here with 20 credits. If it's an archer, it's really expensive. Um, if that's the case, we might not break all of it. We have bad publicity. I don't think they're on hard hitting news. We would have seen it early on. Again, we were way too aggressive, if you ask me. It's a Stavka. Again, they can make that seven strength if they want, but it's nice to get that down. Again, we still have to worry about Mavirus half run later on, but we'll see if they want to trash the ice wall. So they trash just some ice. So this is seven strength. So what does it cost to break nine? Um, that's only seven with bad pub. And this axis here is pretty good. Now the Stavka, we break for one with bad publicity. So we're okay with this. And we'll see what the one card is. It's a Trojan horse. If successful, trash one installed program with install costs le equal or less than. This is the card we're talking about. It's punishment if we've accessed a card, and we have. Um, so we just need to get our credits up. So I think that's annoying. Admittedly, if they trash one of our breakers, we can just simul chip them back. So that's okay. I think here we'd, we'd probably just crack the fermenter. Um, being on 10 credits is fine. We'll just be on 14. Um, what are we throwing out here? Probably the Paladin. It's unique. Gatchmon's kind of cool. It gets us to our Enga if we can run R&D cheaply. And running cheap meme might be hard in this deck. But with a single ice, um, Hippo does threaten. The only thing is we don't have is our Paperclip and Gatchapon might just get us there. Especially with Bad Pub. We install it for free, which is nice. So they just drew five. Okay, so I think we got to consider running Archives here. It's probably very cheap for us. We can get the Gatchapon down first. Might as well get some more money. Oh, we have way more money than we think we do. And we'll run Archives here. Again, they can throw out their worst card. We probably could consider running R&D, but we want to pop the Gatchapon either for a paperclip or if we don't need it for an Enga, which is just more disruption. Again, they might not res here. That's fine. This is a free run. Barring the virus might change that. But we get through this. Again, watch this is just good enough. Again, we don't have consistency to breakers. So do we Gatchapon here? I think we do. We have two bad, bad publicity to use and we might find an Enga. We did find an Enga and we did not find um, anything else. So it's cards to shuffle back. I like the Maw. I like the Liberated Accounts. It's just the most money. So breach server, we will use the Enga. Uh, in theory, we should always do the Alice first so they can choose. Wait, actually, let's dream that first. But then what's the order here? So Enga is sabotage, which is their choice. So order doesn't matter. Well, order matters because you don't want to do Enga because they could sabotage from the top of R&D and then gain information. So we want to make them make the, the you know, the R&D or HQ choice or they want to, we want to make them use the Alice choice when it's more awkward. So there's two cards down. There'll be three cards after the Enga. And I like the pressure of this. We're not running Stargate, which, you know, would probably be a bit more impactful on this board state. So there's the Mavirus. They threw out the Trojan horse. They sabotaged from HQ. Uh, so that was the Mavirus, the Trebuchet. We see the Trebuchet. That's what we were playing around. Uh, so we get purged out. That's totally fine. Again, we only need one virus counter. 
And then here, we can just install the daily cast, keep our money up. And then once a turn, we're going to be running again. Archive seems to be free. Uh, and that's going to draw us a card. They're going to have to sabotage one and then Alice one. And then we're just going to grind them down again. They don't have a remote server just yet. But we just don't have our paperclip. So we're going to need card draw for sure. We might moshing this hand. I'm not sure what we're worried about light the fire in this uh, exact matchup. In theory, <laughs> second ice. Yeah, that's good. So that means that something here is good. But again, if they triple ice archives, let alone quadruple ice archives, how are they going to um, immediately turns our ability off? But how are they going to score out on remote server? So I think we're okay with this. And from now on, we're just going to try and hit R&D. Okay, R&D is iced up a bit. They have one card. I think we can consider actually running HQ here. Uh, we won't Enga because they could trash the card, <laughs> which is safer. But I think we can see what is an HQ. This we break for three credits and they didn't want to res this. Do we dirty laundry? We're weak to border control. I think we have more money than we need. Uh, so I don't think we need to. We can probably do that a bit later when we're safe, but we don't need the three credits this run. As much as if they border control us on an HQ run here, I think we'll be fine. But yeah, Bulwark is 10 credits, and the more bad pub they have, um, the scarier it is for us. Because then these regulatory captures get better. And by regulatory captures, I mean regulatory capture. There's only one more, which is kind of sick. We also don't have a second MK Ultra, so they ever do Stavka half run us, they Stavka half run us. We just want to make sure if we're going to run into that, we run into it sooner in the game than later. And then we just rerun to reinstall our cards uh, with our bin breakers before they can arc lock down. We'll do the Dream Net first. Uh, I don't think we're going to Enga. All right, you see? That's what happens. They kind of... Mind if I can see? No, it's all good. It's going to take a concession. Good game. So they went for the concession there. Again, we're on game point. They have no remote server in sight. Their economy didn't spin up. Thanks for the game. I think that kind of shows the pressure abstractly from Alice. Like our card draw seemed pretty good. We had the sort of pressure and aggression. And like, well, we had the economy that you'd expect from Anarch, which is really good. And then we have that extra disruption, which is the bit of the Alice twist. And the idea is like, if you commit, you know, let alone two ice, but four ice in the worst case to archives, how are you going to score on the remote server? And then more of that archives is open, like admittedly, if they're not in program destruction, like we're excited to simul chip our Enga back. Yeah, making runs on HQ is really important because if they're throwing out their worst cards to either Enga or to the Alice ability, kind of pans out well for you. All right, let's do another one. All right, we're playing against Asa Group and since standard, some good efficiency, we got to play around that, um, What's it called? I never remember the name of the card. Not peak efficiency. Ugh. That one that allows you to do the thing over and over again for each iced remote server. Also, their HP, so they have recursion. So Alice's ability might be a bit um rough, but I'm trying to figure out what ice suite they're on is always the interesting question. Best of luck. Have fun. They kept their hand. Our opening hand has a wake, which is nice. Um, I do think Alice inherently works really well with HQ pressure if they're throwing out the worst card. We have a paladin early, a dirty laundry, and a daily cast. And while Hippo isn't the best on its own, we also have no card draw on this end, which is not great. But while Hippo's not the best on its own, with cards like Fairchild 3 or any Byroid that we can click through, you actually can get a value from Hippo sooner than some other matchups. Uh, it's also nice to trash sometimes the harmonic ice that scale off of each other, let alone you need to de-res a uh, thing to res a bloop. We can keep this hand. We can do worse. We can do better. But like dirty laundry archives get our abilities a good start. Let's see if they respect it. Again, Alice's ability reads the first time a turn we run archives, they have to trash a card. And they do that before we access, so we get to see it, which is always sick. Um, but generally, they throw out the worst card from hand. And bleeding a card from hand makes HQ pressure a fair bit better and kind of disassembles combos and can do a fair bit of work. And mainly, if I'm playing good stuff, Anarch, if I'm not playing something that's, you know, has its own ability that's a build around, but I'll, I'll end up generally playing like Hoshigo because I just value card draw. Card draw generally lets you play a better game. Um, I got to embrace more of these sort of abilities that are not about value, but impact the game in a very interesting way. Archives is wide open. So Asa Group, they drew after they did the double install. In theory, you want to do them the other order. So the only trade-off here is if we want to face check one of these servers, we want to do a click one. And well, it actually doesn't matter that much because of Fairchild. Uh, they can't res it because it would be six credits. So we'll start by running Archives. This gives us the three credits back and they have to discard a card. And then from that point on, we can charge server one and hopefully they res, uh, spend some amount of money resing ice and then we can contest what could be, uh, I don't know, maybe a, a Rashida, a Nico, a Marilyn maybe. Now this could be a spin doctor. Maybe you want to like, you know, play around Alice to some extent, but it's really hard to do it. Fully operational. I figured the name out. Oh, they threw out MCA. Okay. So this is really important to know. They could be on a boom list. Um, they could be on just five threes scoring them out. So let's charge server one. And then our next two clicks is daily cast and uh, Wemo. So we just want to force them to spend money. Again, the early game can be hard uh, to res ice. And then like they can't hedge fund out, let alone difficult to do more stuff. So let's see. It's a next Sapphire. Okay. Um, that's going to fire. That's actually really kind of cool though. So next ice, I don't actually know what all the next ice do because I haven't seen them in a long time. This was like the pre harmonics of harmonics. So austerity goes back to hand. Now they're on one credit, which is totally fine. Uh, they got to shuffle cards from HQ from 
from archives to HQ. Sorry, from HQ into R and D. So they shuffled one card away, but now they're on one credit. So Maryland, we have to trash that because their economy is kind of in shambles and this will be credit neutral next turn and we'll put down the casts. So we have to watch out. I don't know what the other next in the format are. I think what other next are there in standard? Let me just look real quick. Okay, so our opponent might be a bit newer to the game. Um, they're trying to figure out, again, they're asking about the text on Maryland campaign, which allows you to shuffle it back into R&D. You can only do that if the asset is res because then the text won't be active. So two more remote servers, if they're on two credits, so just looking at the next dice, there's next diamond, which is a huge res. It costs 10, but it's one less for every other res next dice. That one's really scary at some point. Then there's next opal, which just allows you to install cards. So MC austerity is on the table. Do we just run through the sapphire and trash it? I think we do. And then I think we can test server two, but I don't know what they can have in there. This costs three to trash. I think we just run through the next sapphire and then we can always run archives later, but we need to get a card draw. This is the downside of having no, like that sort of Hashiko clickless card draw. We're just going to let this fire. They can draw one. They can put the Maryland back to the deck again. It doesn't have a huge impact on the game. And then they can shuffle a card from HQ and R&D if they really want to. All right, move a card. So that was the Maryland. Maryland's in hand. We just need to keep their money down. They can shuffle a card if they want in. So that might be an agenda and running R&D is relatively easy. So we need to keep this down. Again, not that we have economy. Worst case, this could be Rashida. Running archives, if we're just going to smash into a Sapphire and over and over again, it is not a great look. So I think we can draw one here. Uh, worst case, again, here's a Rashida. We'll put the gatchup on down. That means we can crack it on the end of their turn to get a Fermenter if we want to. Uh, if we're on one credit, we could get the Dream Net down. But actually, we can do the Dream Net with the Paladin. So we'll be fine. Uh, Palad uh, Dream Net here, which is a 1 in 50, would be absolute slapper. Now they don't have money, so they're not threatening to res, let alone the Maryland. So on zero credits, barring Rashida, we don't actually have to run the remote server. That being said, fully operational means they can actually just incredibly blow up in credits suddenly. Okay, so we're going to use this on their turn. We found Fermenter. Good enough. Uh, cards to shuffle back. So we want the Steel Skin back. I think we need the Moshing back. Botulus is not good against the next dice. They have a lot of subroutines. Uh, we want an HQ here. Uh, zero's card draw, but I don't think it's that important. I think we'll do the Gatchup on. Okay, start turn. We have two counters on here. We can run HQ. I think they shuffled back a whole bunch of agendas. We get the Waken plant down though, which is nice. Let's just run HQ here. Again, if we can run HQ really easily, we probably should run archives HQ than R&D, but uh, running archives is a bit worse with this Sapphire. There's the fully op. So now we can run R&D and see two cards. I think we just need to get our economy together. There's the dream net. So we kind of order lulled, but um, what can you do? Uh, I think we just run HQ again. We can't steal Ikoa. They don't have credits though, but hey, neither do we. We can just see the top three cards of R&D next turn, maybe even four. Trieste model Byroids. That's really frightening if they had economy, but that means they're on Byroids ice. Uh, this means that we can't uh, use subroutines. We can't break subroutines using runner cards, so we can still click through the Byroids, but any of the scary Byroids generally cost six credits, and this on its own costs two. So here they get credit and fully operational, and fully operational, you can do it over and over again. Uh, they can do it twice more. So now they can do it three times. So credit fully operational puts them on what? Six credits. It's pretty good, but they didn't do it. They just click for credits again. Maybe they're greeting it out here. We know one of these could easily be the Maryland campaign on two credits. I don't think we're worried about them resing anything. What can technically there are some ice that could just flatline us here. I just don't think it's likely. And then with Trieste, they might be on ganked lists, but there's nothing on R&D. So we can see three here. There's a fully op. No surprise. Let's run R&D and see three cards. And then we don't have to run R&D for a minute. Palisade, Maryland. Enigma. I'm worried that this is a what's it called list. I think this might be a Sandberg list. There's the Ikoa. We'll steal that. So this is probably running as few agendas as possible and is trying to um, just uh, get Sandbergs up with a, many, a lot of money and then we can't run anything. So these sort of lists are pretty frustrating to deal with. Now we do have Light the Fire, which does in theory deal with one of the Sandbergs, but we just need to get as many axes as we can as soon as we can. We're expecting things like Magnet, but they're just playing all this neutral end to run stuff. And with Sandberg, it would just become massive strength. There's the Maryland. Again, their economy is not very good. Uh, running through this only gets harder throughout the game, the more res stuff they have. But here is probably where they pop off and suddenly get like a lot of credits. Okay, yeah. So now they're doing fully operational and it triggers off of the Nasix, uh, which just loads this over and over again. And now they can crack this to get all the money. So there's a really wild interaction with Nasix and fully operational because they're all considered different instances of credit gain ability. And so now they're suddenly on 16 credits from what was it, two last turn. Now that means they can res the HQ ice. We know the top deck of R&D is not that fresh. Um, so face checking now, if we hit a next time and we just lose the game. Uh, we'll do the dream net first, I guess. We have Maw, that can be nice. Again, we know they're drawing into a lot of cheap end the run ice and we haven't been drawing into our breakers. All right, the tree S is gone again. This makes sense if they're playing that sort of prison lockout deck. Uh, we know the next, so we saw four cards. We stole one. 
they drew one. So we know the next two on the deck. Okay, so we just have to draw into our breakers. We'll draw. That'll help us. Uh, we'll just draw once more, I reckon, because we'll get the daily cast down. So I forgot what we drew into. It was like a palisade they have in hand, and now I think they have an enigma. There was something in the between that we saw. I forgot what it was. But yeah, now it's really hard to face check into it. Cards like Next Diamond, like, you don't just lose the game. It's just two core damage and trash and installed runner card. Those are good abilities. Okay, so we still know the top of R&D. Oh no, they drew, so they actually don't know the top of R&D. Okay, so they installed server four. So again, I think R&D is now totally unknown. Uh, we could nuka to draw into a dirty laundry. We have one of them. Again, we're not firing our ability. We probably should be. Uh, again, this deck, if it is this sort of deck, has so much recursion built in inherently. So like the Alice disruption isn't that good. Hey, there's the dirty laundry we wanted. Could we do Maw first? I think we do. I do think we have to pull them apart a bit as much as they're gonna have a lot of recursion. So we're gonna hit the Fermenter. Oh no, but then we don't have enough credits. We'll just Dirty Laundry R&D. Gets a free card draw as well. Austerity Policy. Unfortunately, we have to trash that. So I think we have to go back because that is just a direct win condition if we just leave that on the table. Let alone, obviously, we don't lose clicks. So unfortunately, they're drawing into an unknown. So we actually got punished for Dirty Laundering there. So they drew an unknown. It's only a matter of time before R&D gets iced up. And if they have a Sandberg, all their ice gets plus four strength, I think. Not that we have breakers. Watch us deals with it. This is where like, I really wish I had Stargate. It's kind of the downside to this sort of thing. So they've missed the res. They just want to res the Maryland. Totally fine with that. It's credit neutral. Um, obviously, you're meant to res before you see the card you draw, but like, yeah, we've all been there. So the question is what, on, what is on the table? I think we saw a Maryland coming up. Maybe that was the card I forgot. But now the top of deck of R&D is unknown. It's another Nasic, so they can fully operational here for even more money. And the idea is eventually they have unbreakable uh, ice. Again, the problem is we don't even have breakers, so like the Nasic doesn't matter. But yeah, I think we have to mulligan into a hand that just has more card draw. All right, so they're just playing power counters. They drew one, so they have two unknown cards in hand. Uh, new remote server. They're just not icing up R&D yet. They might now. Yeah, okay, now they do. So if we run first click, we can always click through a Byroid. Unfortunately, with Fermenter, we would have to crack that uh, before we hit something like, um, I'm not sure what we're expecting. Palisade would be a thing. We might just be able to run archives there. It forces their card out of the hand, which is kind of a good spot to be because then we have HQ pressure as well. But I think we just have to continue to set up. So we'll just run archives. They have to discard their card. We got to see what it is. So if they're holding an agenda, but I think they can just put agendas on the table. Watch this is nice. We're expecting magnets. That is another Nasex. Okay. Um, so what are we doing here? I think we can just mosh away some of this hand. What do we need? We have a lot of credits. We just need breakers though. Simul chip botulus is really nice. It allows us to play around magnet with they're definitely playing, but also you see ice like palisade we can deal with. Um, their agenda suite, they're gonna be running as few as they can. So seven agendas, seven, five, three agendas. Now, uh, it, the problem is they have to spend turns drawing because if we run archives, they just lose their hand. Um, so that can't be good for them. Uh, I think we're gonna get rid of the liberated. I think we, I think we'll just do this. That'll put us on nine cards. So we can install two discard one. If we install bin breakers, yeah, we're fine with that. So hippo's super important. We can get that down. I think we're gonna get a bit more economy down. They could purge here. They might have a virus. Well, we have to discard a card. We'll get that down. We'll discard this. I think we'll discard the moshing now. Again, we still need more card draw. And next turn we can click this if they don't purge for 14. Maryland shuffles, again. They just wanna keep their density low. I'm not sure if they're excited to draw into Maryland now. Uh, Nasex for, again, infinite economy. And like, it's just, we can't face check. Not only do we have not breakers, but like next design is, uh, next diamond is gonna be res and it's gonna be like eight strength. We just can't break it regardless. So they need to get an ice on archives here. And they didn't, they just drew three. So we have an open archives, which is sick. I think we're gonna take the fermenter. They could, in theory, feed us some a virus. I don't know where their influence goes in this list. It's like usually all the recursion cards. Uh, so we can fermenter this. Run archives. This just gets us a card draw, forces them out. It's a good click, forces the card out of their hand. I uh, will do dream net first. There's another moshing. All right, they threw out a drafter. Cool, that's ice. So I think there's something in HQ. Uh, again, it's really hard for us to check. One of these is gonna be, and maybe both of them are Sandberg. Uh, even just also like what's it called to be really powerful. I think we're going to pre-res this on, I think HQ has a bit better chance of converting. I don't want to run this turn. I'm going to get this down. So if they have a trash or botulist, we can just immediately bring it back. Getting an Enga for archives would actually be really nice here. Uh, but unfortunately, yeah, our draw is not very good. We can consider like wiping this hand. It's going to be hard for us to draw other servers, but I do value the Maw because it just makes any single access off of R&D or HQ a fair bit stronger. We also don't have Mad Dash, which is something you definitely want to play with all these five threes. New remote server. Yeah, so I don't like 5-3 agendas, and I think I'm going to make a video about this, or maybe I already have at this point in time. But these sort of decks where like just playing as few agendas as possible is kind of the name of the game is uh, absolutely unfortunate, right? Like, I don't know. 
Uh, the value of accessing a single access here, if they're running six agendas or I guess seven agendas, um, just not good. Like you want to value interaction as much as possible. And it's really hard to do that sort of thing here. Okay. So they installed a new remote server. Some of these have to be agendas, a uh, spin doctor and a new remote. We want to trash that before running archives. But now if they fully operational, like they can draw almost their whole deck, let alone it's like, again, they have 20 credits waiting on this that they're not using. Second ice HQ. So here on their turn, we're just going to get this uh, botchless backup. Mind you, uh, we have to watch out for Magnet, that's for sure. But this has two counters on it, so I think we can face check through just about everything. So we're going to run Server 7, then we can run Archives, and then we can run HQ. If it's a Fairchild 3, we'll eat one of the subroutines. That's okay, we'll trash a, a Quimo or something. Oh, actually, no, because we have to play around, uh, what's it called? Uh, we can't run besides first click, because we have to play around Trieste model, model Byroids. So now we'll run Archives. This gets us our card draw. That's a Paladin, we can mosh that. And like, it's hard to tell. Again, this is going to be a slow game. We're going to need a lot of money. They threw out a Spin Doctor. Their hand has to be just agendas if they threw out a Spin Doctor. So we're going to check that next turn for sure. So what are we moshing? I value the Botulus. I think we can just draw once here. And probably, I don't know. Library accounts is not that necessary. We just get so much money. In terms of breakers, what do we have access to? Just the paperclip. So we can only break barriers or whatever is Botulized. And here they have to top deck and ice. Maryland's going to shuffle back. Again, this probably is an agenda here if they're throwing out a spin doctor. So it seems like 50% agenda. Nasix, even for more money, again, it scales really well into uh, what's it called, which is definitely on the table, uh, Sandberg. Always hated Sandberg. It kind of encourages this sort of like dirtle, this sort of like heavy turtling strategy. There you go, gain 24 credits, I'm 42. So Sandberg gives like plus eight strength. There's an austerity on the table. Okay, so we only have three clicks. So this is the lock that they're getting is that we cannot, um, if there is on the table Sandberg and on the table, there's also a, what's it called? There's the Sandberg, the Trieste model Byroids. Like we just can't deal with HQ because we don't have a triple click. So we can run through a Fairchild 3, it'll be fine. But yeah, this is the toxic kind of card, huh? So we're still interacting with the board, which is nice. And we're still going to disrupt them. They have to still score out. But like with austerity policy, the HQ pressure is, is very, very alive and well. So that's where the agenda is. So they've figured out how to turn off our Alice ability. So the question is, how do we run this? Because this is their win condition, um, and we have to trash that. That's the second austerity we've seen. So if we run into this, and it's a Byroid, we can't click through all of it. It's a Fairchild 3. If it's an Ancel, we can click through two parts of it, which is like, okay, whatever. Running HQ is not that useful, for obvious reasons. So we can always botulus this and run it in a following turn. I think that's probably a pretty fair line. The problem, though, is if it's a barrier and there's also on the table, what's it called? Uh, a Trieste. And maybe it's on us for letting them have this. This is definitely an agenda. How bad could the ice be? Like, I think it's going to be a Palisade or something like that. I think we just take the risk. With two clicks left, we can't click through. We can click through some Byroids. Not a lot. We can click through the Ancel, if one of the subroutines that we really care about. But hey, things like Botchless, again, things like Endurance were kind of the reason why these lists didn't uh, exist. Because you can deal with the ice super cheaply. So hey, if, if you're really happy Endurance is gone, you're definitely going to see decks like this come back. And so far, we've seen a fair bit of like make taxing ice a strategy in the format. They can res here if they want. If it's a Palisade, it's fine. If it's Enigma, it's fine. If it's a Byroid, it can be pretty messy. And like turn 10, one agenda so far. I think there's two agendas. And that's kind of the issue with like low agenda densities. It's an on-sell. I don't think they have a what's it called on the table. A Trieste, because they would have resed it. Okay, so there's two separate teams that matter. Trash installed runner card. That's like bad. Uh, you may install one card from HQ archives. How bad is that? Uh, getting the spin doctor would be bad. We can't trash cards. That's not good. So we can break two of these subroutines. So which subroutine fires? So trash one installed runner card. That's not great. We definitely want our thing on HQ. Uh, you may install a card from archives. There's that spin doctor comes back. I think that's fine. Runner cannot steal trash cards. That, you know, stops us from doing our thing. So we're going to break that and then we'll, uh, oops. And then we'll virus counter. So they can install something. Again, they have some good options here, let alone another austerity policy would be a problem. Um, but like, we're already here. What can we do? So that was, what was that? Oh, it's a NASX. That's fine. We don't care about NASX. They basically have infinite economy. So that's an NASX. I was really worried, way more worried there would be a spin doctor or like a win condition, but it's just an economy card. We draw a card here, which is nice. 10 strength on sell, and eventually we won't be able to break it. We have to trash that. Uh, cool. So next turn we can run HQ. If they draw an agenda, they have to put it on the table, but they might just want to double advance here. And if they're only running five threes, they have to score out three agendas, um, which is a fair bit. Triple advance. Oh, it's a luminal. Wow. That's really good for them. So I'm assuming they're on seven agendas. It's six three-pointers and a single luminal. That's the fewest amount of agendas you can play in this deck in standard. Now they're drawing three times, which is really good for us. We can run HQ. If they res this, we can trash it. HQ will be open, and then we can just wake through it. 
Admittedly, we end up trashing our botulist. We have one more botulist and then one more simul chip, so not the best. Now, we can contest the Sandberg. We're assuming there's another Sandberg on the table. So we can run HQ, run archives, and then go from there. But yeah, no endurance. Stuff like this happens, right? All right, let's just start with running HQ. I don't think there's anything we want to do. We want to have three clicks, so we can click through a Fairchild 3 if there is something on the table, but I don't think there is. No further action, okay. Again, I think there's two agendas on the table. Let's just send a message. Okay, we're on game point. They can res something for free. We can either go back here. Technically, running archives is a bit safer because uh, we'll access the card from HQ anyways and they can't do any tricks. They res an on cell 1.0 in front of the Sandberg. We can always click through that. So I think we run archives and we have to see the card that they discard. It's another spin doctor. So all the spin doctors are out. So we know there's probably an agenda in server two. The question is, can we ever run it? We're going to need simul chips. I think we can definitely mosh away this hand. I do think the Maw is actually really quite interesting. And now if they top deck anything, we, we kind of hit it. So I guess we'll get the Nuka down. Uh, we have a lot more money. We can run our DC three cards, but it's pretty difficult. We've seen two of the bigger Byroids, but next diamond is really scary. They're still in 31 credits and we know there's a Nasix on the table. I do think server two is an agenda, but we need to find again. There's uh, one, two, three. So only four more agendas and 23 cards. So we're just gonna have to attrition them down with Alice. There's the Nasix. Okay, it's more money. Install card again. If they have an agenda, they just have to get it out of their hand. And for all it's worth, the subroutines on this are not that impactful. Fully operational, so they can get infinite money once again. Uh, for what it's worth, I don't think we mind. Card draw is kind of scary here, but now if we just run server a a one, like I think checking the server it might be right. The thing is like we don't have to run anything they don't advance because they're only on five, three agendas at this point. So like we can run HQ for free uh, to get a counter. We can run R&D first click. I think that's kind of fine. Uh, the worst case is the next diamond. Actually, that is a bit of a problem. Ah, uh, I think we just have to draw more thinking. So I do think there's multiple agendas on the table. The problem is like getting through the ice is really difficult. Barring our uh, botulus, we have to like spend a lot of money. It's possible, but it's difficult. Again, no endurance anymore. Uh, if we run HQ once, we get another wake charge. That's probably worth it. It draws a card too. And again, running a seeing three, potentially four on R&D. We're going to run this first click every turn. Okay, we got a black orchestra and in in potentially into the bin, which is good. All right, we'll steal skin. We have an Enga. Enga, honestly, is kind of fire. It forces them to like rip their stuff apart. Uh, this is the first each turn you make successful run, so it doesn't actually do anything this turn. Funny enough, too, like just having, oh no, we have to access a card. So I think we're just trying to get disruption. We can maybe win off of the Enga. Now, if they double advance, what do we do? We don't have access to our MK Ultra. There's only one of in the list. Uh, luckily, we've seen two on cells so far. So in terms of the centuries, it'd be like next diamond, which like we can reinstall our breakers. We just take core damage. It's fine. Uh, so here, we want to discard one of these. Oh, we could have nuked. We didn't have to steal skin. Excuse me. That's on me because we can always mosh those away. We'll just get this down and get some money, I reckon. We're going to need a fair bit of money if we ever have to break. And I think we can make one good run and win as long as we have clicks left to steal an Ikua. But now anything they top deck, right? Like we run archives. If they don't install the card. Oh, it's a Maryland. That's perfect. If they don't install the card, like they have to rip the top of the deck and the card from hand. So they just advance here. We're totally fine. And again, 28 credits here. We can contest it, but like it doesn't matter. They're on 55. I don't think there's any way they can punish us. Maybe they're impunitive, but we survived. That ice is down. That's totally fine. Because we have Enga. We're just going to make sure we fire Alice before Enga. But they need Ice of Archives. They have no cards in hand. So at least we install Enga, run Archives. We get two accesses. Uh, botulus count. We have one more simul chip in 16, one more botulus in 16. That's going to be really important. That's the best way we have to access. And they're not advancing again. I think Server 2 has to be an agenda. All right. We'll just get some money. Archives. Alice is not a May. Uh, Dreamnet. Enga's unique. Yeah, so this forces them, we get to access the top of R&D because they have to trash R&D. If they have no hand, this works really well together. It's a gaslight. Again, this card allows them to bring together recursion pieces, let alone their fully operationals, which are super important. I worry that they could be in our clock down. We're going to keep one in hand if we can. All right, uh, get into a simul chip. We got it. That's really important. We can use the simul chip to run R&D uh, by trashing the Enga eventually. I think we just install this. They could purge. I think we're fine with that. And then we're trying to, going to try and run R&D and to see three cards after we Enga them. So cards we don't need. Uh, Ma doesn't fire in archives, mind you. Another Enga is a win con. Uh, I think Deuces Wild can probably go. And merely the Bravado is like, it's fine. It's probably actually comparable to the card draw. I think the card draw of uh, Bravado might be, or of Deuces Wild might be better than Bravado, considering we want to find our last Botulus. Again, turn 14, not really looking to score out. They're drawing up now, so they have to have multiple cards in hand. And they need an ice on archives here. I don't know how much ice they're packing, but a single ice on archives totally changes the game. And they haven't put ice there. There you go. Okay, so now the game is totally different. So here, I think 
we simul chip away this botulist and put it on an HQ. We haven't seen a magnet yet, and that's like the downside. That's the one card we can't deal with. The magnet will be massive strength. Two ice there is totally fine. But I think we have to move the botulus. I think we do it now so we don't face check really poorly. Again, if the sentry just fires. Oh, we disconnected. Okay, we're back. So we'll install a botulus here on HQ. We'll have two counters, which probably gets us there. And we'll just run HQ here. We can install the Maw. I don't think we're going to Enga. But no, we need to have three clicks in case it's a Fairchild 3. Because it'll be like a lot of strength. But yeah, 15 strength ice. <laughs> I miss you, Endurance. All right, it's Enigma. Okay, so that's two counters. I think here we could consider, again, 12 strength Enigma. We could consider here uh, not breaking both subroutines. Is our click worth a virus counter? Probably not. Uh, we can still steal Ikua. We can let that fire. Still haven't seen a magnet. We're lucky about that. We'll see one card in hand. We're not going to fire the Enga. Oh, good game. Oh, we found it. Wake, Dream Net. No. Steal. Good game. I think they needed Ice Up Archives a long time ago. You saw the Alice thing, but this sort of deck, I've seen this archetype before. I think we've seen with bigger deck sizes, which is even more frustrating. But the idea of the slow play, the Sandberg, get the infinite economy, it's hard to interact with this. And we could be face checking. We don't get our breakers that soon, so it's kind of difficult. But like 54 credit Sandberg, yikes. <laughs> and as much as I'm not saying that Endurance like was great, but the Endurance stops decks like this from being, uh, you know, a possibility. Let's do another one. All right, Asa 49. Last time we played against Arteza, they were trying to kill us with an education combo, a re-education. Thanks, you too. So Asa could be anything. We've been playing into the so Sandberg decks a bit. I've seen a fair bit of them. Um, they're pretty mean. Our opening hand, we have Moshing. We can always Mosh away the early Hippo, the Botulus Fermenter maybe, and then we have Daily Cast as a start. That's okay. Again, Archive's pressure is pretty good. Botulus lets us contest their mode server, and Hippo lets us contest some of the buy rides we're expecting to click through. But I think we can do worse than this. We'll keep it. They kept, are they mulligan too? So a lot of times you can maybe either mulligan a bit more aggressively if you think they're going to start with a worse hand or kind of the opposite. Keep a worse hand because you can all be better into it. Maybe a dodgy mulligan. We'll see how this goes. Again, Asa group, not Asa, it's Asa. They get a double install the first time a turn they install a card, except there's some conditions about it. The first card has to be, uh, could be agenda. The second can't be an agenda. So that's one click. Icing up archives. I love that respect. Uh, do we, do we respect? Do we respect? Do we face check? Find out what ice it is? They spend any amount of money to deny a card from hand. I think that's fine. We just want to force them up after that. Okay. They just lose the card. We want to run server one at some point to see what this is. Now, if we're not running first click, that's the issue. Oh, they threw out a mana arm. So we could consider running HQ. There's some good pressure here. Let's see if we can moshing into um. And go run HQ. No, I think we're just going to run HQ and put the daily cast down. I think there's a chance there's a Rashid or a spin doctor. The thing is we on six credits, we don't want to run besides first click. Yeah, that makes sense. HQ pressure. That is what Alice does. But if six credits, they can resin Fairchild 3. And if we don't have three clicks to click through it, we're in a bad spot. So this needs to be, ooh, it's not a Rashida. I think that would be the best thing by a mile. Drawing up again. HQ pressure is real. Hedge fund. So we're going to run archives first click. Now they might be able to res. And that seems to be ice. Or sorry, that seems to be an agenda. So I think first click, we can run it. We threw out our botulus. We do have a simul chip, gadget on combo in some convoluted way. So we'll see what this is. Maybe a Hagen. Could be an NGO front. I don't know how many we're seeing. That's a Fairchild 3, so that's good. We'll click through that. That's why we don't run unless we have three clicks left in standard if they have six credits. So maybe it's an NGO front. Maybe it's just an off-world office. That is a really rough start. Now with three credits, they can't defend archives, and we have Enga, and we have our Alice ability. So now they can jam behind here every turn. We can't really afford to run through it every turn. We don't have that passive card draw of um, something like uh, Hoshiko. So like we need to spend clicks pushing our game state forward. You don't just get it on the side. Four credits. Okay, we're going to run archives. Um, if it's uh, an, what's it called? An architect. It's, it's not great for us. The Managarm comes back. And again, oh, we actually could have installed the Enga first. Because it doesn't fire for the rest of the game. For the rest of the turn. It's the first time. So they can discard a card here. They threw out a Hakarl. Why? All right. Uh, we can get the Gatchapon down and run. Uh, we're looking for the one of Dream now, which isn't really good. So I think we can set up some. So we're going to draw once for a Dirty Laundry. So we'll run HQ. Trivius, wow, again, our HQ runs are so much more impactful considering that they're trashing cards. Yeah, yeah, ooh. Um, So we're just gonna put the Gatchapon down and we can crack it on the end of their turn so that we can get a Fermenter or even a Botulus to deal with the Fairchild 3 sooner than later. Hedge Fund now, nine credits, something in their remote server. Could be an agenda, could be a Spin Doctor. So what do we have here? Dirty Laundry, Fermenter, Enga. We already have an Enga in hand, so I think we'll put the Fermenter down. We want the Dirty Laundry back. We definitely want the Hippo back considering the Fairchild 3 is ripe for the picking. And then I think we'll just take the Moshing. All right, start turn. We'll start by running archives. Again, nine credits. They forced to spend any credits on that. Again, we could have put the Enga down first click. 
But again, we have to respect Fairchild 3 here. It's an Eli. Do we click through that? I think we let the Unbroken Subroutines fire. Now we can do Engar run HQ. And merely they can sabotage the card into archives and maybe it'd be safer with a spin doctor. That's the awkwardness here. I think we can drop a wee bit. Uh, we can drop once more, install the Enga maybe. Hippo is really important because it contests this remote server. So now they have to ice this up. Oh, Rashida is so good for them. But otherwise we can also contest. We can Hippo consider Eli. So now they have two servers that they need to protect from Hippo. And so we're knowing Hippo trashes if you break all the subroutines on the outermost ice, not outermost resed ice. So just having the extra cards here to install an ice here, install an ice here, it's kind of super good for them because then we can't contest either of them. So we'll see how they respect the hippo. MCA, oh, perfect. That means they can't triple click through the Fairchild. And we cut pinhole threadings from this deck to play uh, Light the Fire, not that we have played it. But that is a hard card for us to deal with because we can no longer click through that. So we have to run first click here to run archives to trash some stuff. It's kind of expensive. Is it worth doing? Probably not because we're going to lose to this sooner than later. Luckily, though, austerity policy scales poorly into um, uh, hand damage. So I think we'll run archives, double click through it. Otherwise, we're trying to find our paperclip, which is two and 36. Again, we have a huge deck size. And we can always like crack uh, the simultip from enter and then pull on a botch or something like that. But let's just force him to spend more on archives. Let's go. We should got the Enga down a year ago. So we'll click through this. We'll hippo it. It's gone. And then we get our Alice ability. Love a dream net here. I don't know. Maybe we should play dream net or uh, as a neat, but. Obviously, the choice is there. Seamless in the bin. Again, a card they might not need now. Doesn't really work with austerity. But now they have some time to hit this once and maybe double ice. They need ice up archives. Interesting junction here. Again, if they don't click this, which it's not hard to spend a click on it, we can always run through and trash it for a whole turn. Now, unfortunately, with austerity, we can't face check into uh, uh, Fairchild 3. We only have three clicks this turn. So I think we can do Enga run HQ. What do we do? Enga run HQ. We draw once probably for dirty. Okay. So we, I think we just do Enga run HQ. Again, we've been trashing cards from, from HQ. They can always discard an agenda here. That's the ugliness with Enga. They can discard the agenda that they're scared for us to steal. So running HQ with Enga is kind of the worst time to put it. Oh, wow. Wow, good game. Woo, that's a lot of pressure. Now, you definitely think that they have an agenda in hand with austerity policy. Not 100%. Always had one agenda. Damn, okay. But that's our pressure. And like, we don't scale good into late game. We don't have passive card draw. We had good enough economy, but we just need to draw into our breakers. And unfortunately, we drew zero card draw as soon as we draw into. And like, we have a lot of stuff. Moshing would have been sick. Uh, new cuts would have been sick. The zero, I think we RFG'd, but we have a good card draw to get into there. Yeah, let's, let's do a rem rematch. All right, we're going to run this back. All right, as a rematch, I don't know if we can replicate that sort of wild rips. Thanks, you too. So opening hand, we have the moshing for card draw. So we can mosh away most of this hand. We can mosh a moshing and Enga maybe liberated. We have sure gamble, which is good enough economy. Getting liberated down is kind of difficult considering Asa is pretty aggressive, let alone uh, with austerity policy, we're going to be losing clicks. But this is definitely a good enough hand. I think we need two dream nets. We want to run once a turn with their ability. Sometimes it's hard to run archives, of course, but we love the central pressure. Getting card draw at the same time is one of the best things you can ask for in this game. All right, let's see how it goes. They kept their hand this time, so maybe it isn't as bad, and we'll see where they put their ice. Now, if they put ice on the table and they don't click up to six credits or play an econ card, it's a world of difference. Where six credits is the threshold where we have to expect things like uh, Fairchild 3.0. We're not really scared of on sell 1.0 on turn one because the subroutines are very unlikely to be um, reasonable. But now it's six credits. It's run first click or don't run at all. So we're going to run first click on archives. If they spend money here, it puts them further behind, so we just get a free trash from from HQ. Again, they throw the worst card twice in a row. <laughs> First card thrown out as a mana garment. That's a support piece. You're going to need more cards to get that working. I think here we could actually value the Enga. We might be able to get the Enga down because that puts even more pressure. And I love Enga while running archives. I'm going to try this line to see how it's different. So we'll drop once. Oh, that's sick because next turn we can moshing away this hand after we've run. But now with the Enga, we're going to put on even more aggression and we can even pressure R&D. <laughs> Should install an archives myself. Yeah, that on archives is like really hard for us to deal with. If we ever have to spend, you know, admittedly they're spending credits, but if they ever have to spend the mana garm on archives, like we're in an okay spot. Okay, so I think Spin Doctor could be on the table. I think we're going to check server one. Uh, we just want to make sure if they spend a lot of money again, three to six credits resing ice. Uh, that's really bad. The drafter brings back the mana garm, but that's just going to happen. Again, just getting it on archives will be a bit of a nightmare, but at least if it's there, it's not on the remote server. And that's a kind of a hard thing is if they protect up the server that we care about. Managarm to HQ. So it's just in there. Are they going to install on the table? Okay, they only did the top part. So we can breach here. Remove a host of power counter. All right, so they can just trash the Managarm again if they want to. It'll be face down. So Nico, we have to keep their money down. Got to keep them honest. Okay, we don't have a good economy here. 
I think checking server two is reasonable, but I think we want a moshing first, uh, just to get all that economy. We want a fermenter down in, in the background. Are right, we have dirty laundry? We could dirty laundry server two. If it's spin doctor, we lose our money. Maybe we don't need to take that risk. So we could probably just check this and then put down a Pwemu. We'll probably have enough money to sure gamble next turn. That's a Maryland. Uh, puts us on five. That's fine. And then I think we get the uh, Pwemo actually does not make Nuka cheaper, but the things we're going to draw into Pwemo are going to be cheaper. Maybe we just gamble here. I don't want to show them that we have more credits. Do you think they're going to ice up R and D next turn? No, I think we can dirty laundry. So maybe we'll just put down the Pwemo again. This is the card that gives us more value when it's there at the start of our next turn. She doesn't. Um, so ideally we like dirty laundry R and D and see something double install there on five credits. Okay, cool. So spin doctors we haven't seen yet. Well, dirty laundry R and D. We don't get a card draw from it. I don't think there's any card draw we're really interested in. Uh, we don't have a lot of money to trash stuff. Yeah, this is the best way that we can get up to the sure gamble without clicking for credits. Let's force the Enga. Audacity. Okay, so definitely a much faster deck than we're expecting. Now, a cool thing is that our pressure uh, forces them. They discarded top of R&D. The pressure makes it harder for them to audacity, which requires three cards in hand. I wasn't expecting to see that. Get this down. We'll drop. We have the Waking Plant. I think just getting down the daily cast for two is going to be good enough. It's going to be credit neutral next turn. And then next turn, we can Deuces Wild, Exposed Archives, run, and they'll have to sabotage two cards. We're just worried about Spin Doctor, that's for sure. I think there's a Rashida on the table. We know that there's a Mana Garm likely in server one, which, again, only one Light the Fire. Maybe we should be playing more. I think that's a fun card, as much as Pinhole is like so much easier to play. Uh, so let's just get the cast down. We got six cards next turn. Again, we're not gambling because we don't need to gamble, but maybe they can force up a lot of money. Oh, that's really good. Seamless from hand. So they have an audacity. They have seven more credits. So let's force them to res some stuff. So let's suppose make a run first, I reckon. I don't think the cards in hand. So what's this? It's a Hagen. That will trash your Enga. So we're just gonna run archives and then we'll run the Hagen after that. Because once this Enga is empty, it's only worth simul chip. We also know there's no spin doctor at the table. Hedge fund off the top. They probably trash the audacity. I think we're going to gain the credits here because we have the card draw. All right, so there's a hedge fund coming up. They have good money. We have to be able to contest remote server, so we definitely need card draw. We have a simul chip. So if we get the simul chip down, we actually can return the Enga this turn. Um, again, if we're trying to run archives, it's not that good. Let's just force them to res on archives. Because if they want to keep their one card in hand, they have to res the hog in here, which is going to drop them to five credits. Admittedly, they have a hedge fund. They don't know that. But this firing, when it doesn't do anything besides end the run, is kind of, you know, the best for us. This thing's annoying too because it trashes botulus. So we're going to need botulus with two counters to get through this. We're going to need a fair bit of effort. With five credits, we could face check. We know they're on her Carl. I'm pretty sure that's an audacity, but checking the one card in HQ is probably reasonable. It's just, what do we discard here? I think we just bravado HQ. Last click drafter is a nightmare. It can't be a six coster, so it can't be the Fairchild three. So I don't think we mind this. Yeah, right? Just, I was just saying that was the blowout. We got lucky there. It's not the drafter. So we get to see the one card they're keeping in hand. It's a luminal. Again, that is the big thing about Alice. If we're forcing him to end gun, destroy all their cards, the one left in hand is usually the agenda. So, so we know that there's an audacity in there. They have a hedge fund in hand. And this is a hard remote server to deal with. We only have one Emic Ultra. It's a bit of a weakness to the deck. And unknown server one could be anything. Okay. I think we can get the Waken plan and charge HQ again. If it's a fair child, it's pretty rough. So let's just continue to drop until we find a hippo. Okay, Liberty Accounts might be a bit slow. Uh, we definitely have to use our Pallet in this turn. Uh, we need to draw into our Breakers. That's the most important thing. So I think Rashida there is the best case scenario for them. Now they're in like the ugly top deck mode where if we can get into archives cheaply, they have to trash everything they draw into if they're like doing anything else on their turn. So that's always really good for us. Uh, what else do we have for in terms of we have 11 cards in the heap. So in terms of the simul chip, we have access to Enga, which is like really nice because it just rips off the top of the deck, but we can't get it down this turn because we have to trash something. So I think we can consider moshing the sand. What do we want to get rid of? I think moshing the, the sure gamble is totally fine. Moshing the nuke is okay. Liberated, I think it's a bit too slow for this matchup. Uh, the waking plan seems important because it gives them a reason to ice HQ. Uh, I'll get rid of the money. We're probably going to draw into more money. Yeah, that's really good. Unfortunately, mod doesn't do anything on this board state, but getting down the hippo is really important uh, because then we can uh, really threaten face checks into HQ next turn. Okay, so this clickless economy is pretty good again. Uh, that's a beauty of Paladin. It makes things like daily cast. While it's slower, obviously, than Sure Gamble, technically more credit positive. This is a six credit econ card this turn. So what do we do here? I think the simul chip is fine. I guess getting the nuka down is fine too. I don't know. I don't want to show Ma, but in theory, if they like just triple advance or score something here, ooh, not a Rashida, not a Maryland either. Maybe it's austerity. I think they had clicks to res it. But if we get the Ma down, we're we're threatening HQ. All right, so that's nice. Okay, Ma no longer threatens. 
Getting an Angadown would be good. Advance. Okay, so we know this is Mana Garm and two ice. Okay, so top and righty is wide open. If we get a Dream Net down, that's good. Dirty Laundry, we can check it. Uh, Maw doesn't do anything because they don't have cards in hand, so maybe we've built our own prison and put ourselves in it. That's a bit rough. But running this is obviously going to be pretty important if we can. We just have to get card draw. All right, that's two types of breakers. MK Ultra is the hard one here. But now we have a paperclip to run archives relatively well, relatively well. Uh, we could always hippo that away. I think here we just get the Waken plan and run HQ. If they spend six credit resing a Fairchild 3, I think we're actually okay with it. We lost the Black Orchestra, so we actually can deal the Fairchild 3 here. But just charging the Wake is okay, and then we can lock two off the top of R&D. So they didn't res on four, or was it on five, excuse me. And if they res here, they can't really contest the remote server. We can always fire the drafter. So this is obviously a weird run, but it just gets awake and plant tokens. I think we can run R&D in C2 and just try and lock the deck a bit. Fairchild 3 coming up and Rashida. We'll trash the Rashida. So they're just drawing into Fairchild and unknown after it. So putting the Fairchild 3 down, like it's kind of rough into a Hippo, let alone six credits, but they're going to be on more credits. Another off-world office. Sick. Okay. So what we're going to do is we need to get some runs in here. They're on 12 credits, so they're more likely to run on HQ. I think we can just maw run HQ. We can nuke it first. Um, what does that get us? I think we can run HQ here. If that fails, we run R&D, we trash the uh, Fairchild. Let's run HQ. Maybe we want a nuka here. I'm not sure what we want to run into, but we have some good pressure. We need to get the paperclip into the bin. So let's see if they res. Again, they're on 12 credits and they're not like being forked to res anything else on the same turn. So they could consider resing this. Again, the only breaker we have is decoder. We know it's not uh, likely to be a drafter. So maybe it's like a gatekeeper. Oh, no res. So the Fairchild's going down. We can run R&D and C2 again, and this will lock them. So they're gonna have to spend a turn drawing. Vitruvius will take it. Vitruvius, wow, will take it. Whoa. Okay, again, they're on game point if they're on five threes, if they're on global food initiative. We can go back and see the top of the deck. So we're on five agendas in the top 19 cards. That's more than you expect. One more melody has gone. <laughs> yeah, you have to watch out for that, but immediately one more and we will have our own issues. Okay, Magnet, that's okay, we can break that. So now they're drawing to a magnet. Now they have to start drawing up. And the more they draw up, the more our other pressure pieces come together. And they're not rezzing on HQ. I don't know what it is. So unknown card in HQ. I didn't track enough where the Enga Sabotage came from, but we haven't seen a Spin Doctor yet. We know that's a Mana Garm. Okay, so that's probably the magnet. And I think they don't want to res this because it's a, a Byroid uh, that we can click through. And that's an unknown in server one. So let's draw up because we can't run. Okay, we have our MK Ultra. That's sick. Uh, the Gachapon can get to an Enga would be really good. We don't want to get the botulist down until they get uh, the gate, uh, the what's it called, the decoder res, uh, the magnet res, excuse me. So I think we can run HQ here, and if they res the magnet, we just bounce off of it. We can make them, if they want to res everything, it's nine credits, and I think we're okay with that. So we know this has to be the magnet. We'll run HQ and force them to spend three. Now we've got three three twos out of the list. So we'll see here, thinking, if this is a Fairchild 3 or an on sale, how bad is it for us? They go down to five credits. We have to res and break the Fairchild 3. We can't click through it, so we'd have to trash two cards. I think we actually just jack out here. We probably messed that up. So we install for two. It's, it's nine credits. It drops us to four. I think it's not worth it, considering it doesn't do a maw. Actually, no, we get the black. We should do it, because we get it actually installed for free. If it's an on-sell, that's a bit worse, but okay, it's a Fairchild 3. That, that's good, unless that's a Rashid in server one, or a Spin Doctor would also be bad. So the thing is, we install this for free, which we had to install something this turn, and then we just break this fully for, oof, nine. I did the math wrong. It's nine. Uh, still, that's fine. As much as our economy isn't there. All right, so we can run R&D in C2. Um, what are we doing for the rest of the turn? Our Maw won't fire. Again, if they keep the cans down and we discard these two. Next turn, we can get them to Liberated. Uh, I think that's fine. We just need to lock them. And barring a Rashida and a Spin, they'll see further. Hedge Fund off the top. Maryland, we can let them draw that. I'd rather them draw that than anything else. So we can install this. We'll go down to one credit. And then next turn, I think we just need to wait next turn to get the Liberated down. So we'll credit, throw this out. It actually been, uh, might have been okay to install the gatchup on. It's still next turn. We'd have to click for a credit for the Liberated, but we might get down a Fermenter or an Ango with this. Uh, so far, what do we need to discard? Our ability isn't relevant with Maw on it, so I'm going to get rid of the MK Ultra so we can consider contesting the remote server. I think a Light the Fire is what we need for the remote server. It's a Rashida. hate it. So they drew into, it was a Hedge Fund, I believe, and a Maryland. And then two unknowns, now three unknowns. Okay, so now archives matters. So trashing the paperclip is relevant. We will Gatchapon. If we Gatchapon and find a Fermenter, we can always put that on um, archives. Again, we know the magnet's here, so that's going to change the game. We'll crack this. What do we get? Black Orchestra is useless. Paladin is useless, so it's going to be the Fermenter. Uh, shuffle three more cards back. We want the Light the Fire. They put nothing in their remote server, which is great for us. That's really, really good for us. So we can take some time. We don't want the Black Orchestra back. We don't want the Paladin back, so that kind of solves this for us. Okay, so we have four credits on here. We have to credit before we play the Liberated. It's a bit ugly. 
if we draw into an econ card, we'd have to top deck. Uh, there is gambles. We can't really play. I think that's all we have. We always crack this for a click. I don't think we need to. I think we just do credit liberated, hit the liberated a couple times, and then next time charge. That's the only issue he is here is we're not contesting. So we think this could be the magnet. We only have so many credits to break ice. So like, what's the worst case here if we face check into this? Because face checking is actually really valuable because we get an access little in the maw. So I think we can do that. Don't know what we get blown out by. I think gatekeeper will be the only blowout here because we, we don't have the two credits necessary. It's a border control. Okay, that's fine. It's really good to know that's there. We again, we force them to spend money, which is great. So now either we can credit now and get the liberty counts down. I think it's worth doing. Otherwise, we could have got this without clinging for credit next turn, but we just need to get this down sooner than later. All right, unknown in hand. Uh, they have a Maryland. We have to remember that. So install into server one could be something else. In 18 cards, we have one light the fire. Maybe we should be playing two. I don't know. It's such a nice way to deal with the server. They have to score two more agendas barring global food initiative. And we haven't seen any five threes and not a lot of influence. So I think global food initiative makes good sense. Okay. Easily could be the game with seamless and five threes. They advance at once. Oh, austerity. Okay. So HQ pressure is really relevant with Maw. And we only have three clicks a turn. So that makes Liberated a bit worse. We got to think our way out of this one. So I think we can hit Liberated, hit the paperclip, install it for three, run RD. If they border control us, it's fine. Um, we can always consider hippoing the border control. In terms of hippo, what else are we hippoing? Not the magnet, maybe the remote server, but maybe not, because we could win on just a good lucky access here. And we still have two hippos in the list, so I don't think we have to be precious with this hippo. So I think we do that. And maybe we haven't seen a spin doctor, so like, Ma is a bit dodgy. I think there might be a spin doctor in archives, but they would have to have thrown that out themselves. But I think we just need to get the Ma every turn. So they could border control us here. We're going to spend the two. Oh, sorry. We should have let them ETR. They just saw that we were willing to pop it, but they have to do that before we break. Yeah, so in theory, they had to do that on approach. Um, but still, obviously, if they want to do that, they can do it. It stops a maw. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Sorry about that. All right, so we breach here. We get a maw, obviously, an access. We get a maw, potentially. It's a gatekeeper. That's hard to, for us to deal with. It'll be a six strength once it's res, let alone it gives them a very relevant ability. Sorry, I clicked through that pretty quickly. But it's a 3-0. Uh, three cost for two separate teams. One ends the run. I don't think they have the agenda in hand considering they're drawing, but they just need a better piece of ice here. We only have three clicks a turn again. Once this fires, we lose the game. So I think we just need to get accesses on HQ this turn. So this turn, they can score out a 4-2. Next turn, they can score out a 5-3. So we know this is a magnet. So I think we just have to run HQ here for nine credits. We'll get the maw trigger as well. And I think that's quite good. Eventually, we'll run archives. Okay, thinking. So I think what we can do is we can get eight credits here. It'll be on 11. We'll run here. If they spend three on this, that's fine. And then we can decide something else. And then we run archives cheaply. I think we have to do that. This could be the gatekeeper, but not necessarily. The thing is, like, they'll win in two turns if we don't contest HQ relevantly uh, because they have a 5 3 in here. They can fast advance out. Do they res? Again, we think this is a magnet. It is a magnet. So now this changes the math because this is going to be 9, 10, 11, 12. We actually can't break this. So now, if anything, we run archives. We haven't seen a spin doctor yet. We can't botulist this for obvious reasons. We can run R&D. That would be fine too. It gets the maw trigger, which I think is more relevant considering if they're holding an austerity policy agenda. But if this is a gatekeeper, we can deal with it. They can't res a fair child three. If it's a gatekeeper, it's in six strength. So we break for six, right? Yeah. So we'll just run R&D. And they obviously have an agenda in there. This will be three from now on, but six now is okay. Again, we have a click for four button and this will get a maw if we don't steal. And if we steal, we have to remember not to trash two. It's another fair child off the top. Okay, so we mod another unknown card. We only have three clicks a turn. Otherwise, we definitely want to be checking archives before a spin doctor comes down. But we know they're drawing into FC3. And then this turn, we could always like liberate, liberate it. And then we'll have enough money, I think, to run HQ to get one good run. Can we contest the austerity? Actually, probably. It's actually probably right that we should do that. Our MK Ultra installs for free next turn. And if we don't trash the mana garden, we get another maw. But actually, yeah, running the remote server, we probably should not discount. I haven't been considering it for a while now. All right, so they have a fair child in hand. Austerity will lose a click. They don't have the credits to score in an agenda here, if I'm not mistaken. So now they're in four. So the beauty is on four credits. They can crack this next turn. So they lose a click to gain three clicks. So they're on five clicks. No. They lose this to gain four. So they're on six clicks. So they could do install, advance, 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 and agenda. Now, they don't have five credits to score out. So the only way they can austerity policy and win next turn is with an audacity or something like a subliminal messaging. They need a cheat, a way to get multiple advancements for less than we would ex uh, assume is the, the rate. 
I think the best thing we can do is run HQ. We can get an Axis, and then if that whiffs, we get a Maw. So we get one and a half chances of disassembling the combo. Now, to run this, this is three credits. To run this is nine, so we need 12 credits. This puts us up eight, so it puts us at 13. So we can just do that. And if that whiffs, we can always run R&D and C2 at some point, not this turn. Other options running archives. I think this is the safer line. Wait, hold on. We also have to consider if running server one is correct. And it actually might be. It might be the less risky play. Like the most expensive thing they could res here would be a gatekeeper. We break that six. We break this for three because uh, we install for free. So that's nine. And that leaves us with four. Sorry, if we res the manogram, we can't trash it because we have to spend three on this. So again, this could be six. This could be uh, nine. And that leaves us with four. Uh, which means we can exactly trash the austerity and have one credit left over. We know this is a Manogarm. If they res the Manogarm, we actually can't trash the austerity policy because we can't get a successful run. But if they do that, they'll only be on two credits, which means it just buys them another turn. So I don't think that's worth it. Uh, if we top deck to light the fire, we'd be in a good spot. I think we just go HQ. Again, we can disassemble it. So this is expensive. <laughs> Could be an Ika here. Admittedly, if we find the Ika, we could trash it. But I think there's very... Likely there's an Ika in here. We can't play around Ika, unfortunately. But they need Ika and Audacity. So I'm okay with this because it still gives us wake and plan charges. So we're going to break that. We're through. We break for nine. We actually could break this for six, which might be smarter. It doesn't play around Ika, but we can trash one of our installed cards. Uh, which card will we trash? Maybe the Puemo at this point. The Puemo is honestly worth about three credits next turn. So I don't think it's exactly worth it. If we needed credits to steal Ika, yeah. But otherwise, I think this is fine. Ah, uh, no, this doesn't let us trash Ika. I think we should trash this, actually. Let's do that. So we break two of the subroutines and trash one of our installed cards. Seamless launch in hand. That doesn't do anything on the austerity policy turn. So now we have to get the Maw and get lucky. We did not trash the seamless launch, which was one of the best things for us. So now they have to have Audacity and a 5-3, and we, haven't have, we have to have not trashed either of them. We don't know what they drew into, but we can run Archives next turn, run R&D next turn. We'll run R&D first. This is three credits. This is three credits. So we need to, do, we're short credits actually to do it. We are short credits. And we also have to access with enough for Ikawa. So I think maybe we just run archives. Ah, it's hard. Draw. They don't put a card on the table. They're not threatening Spin Doctor. That's super important. But clearly they don't have the win in hand. That's obviously the best thing here. Yeah, trashing this was totally correct. Because if we don't win, we need credits to like run and steal Ikawa. We could have trashed two of our installed cards, but that doesn't make it any cheaper because we still have to play six. Okay, so when I have three clicks, they have five credits. So now they can score it from hand. Okay, into the tank. We have a good game here. This is really good. So we can pay, we can click for credit, access two cards here on three. We'll get a Maw too, which is a chance of disrupting them. I think that's totally fair. If we steal an Ikawa, we'll have a click left and two credits so we can win off of R&D. If, if we're talking about the agenda suite, so we're assuming they're on three off-world office, that's six. If they're on three Vitruvius, that's on 12. 13, 14 on Luminal. So that means they need an additional uh, 20 points. So they're probably on another two-pointer and then two six-pointers. Did I do that right? No, that's not right. So, okay, they're on, if they're on two Ikawas, that's three, six. And they're probably on five threes with austerity. Say they're on three of them. That's nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So they could be on three Ikawas and a bunch of two-pointers. But I do think the best thing here is credit run our DC2. Respect Ikawa. And if it fails again, we have Maw. So we have a chance we can disrupt it from hand for one further turn. But yeah, with Ikawa, you need a click and two credits to steal it. So let's go. Nice. Nice. Good game. That was an exciting one. Yeah, super close. Wow. So they're on GFI. Well, one credit short there. Yeah, totally. Would you mind resing all? So yeah, they had it. They had the GFI, they weren't playing Ikawa, which obviously makes a lot of sense too. Um, so we can see what's in archives, whether we're running it. And if we ran it, there was actually a spin doctor in there, which we could tell, and a GFI. So no matter what server we ran, we would have been fine there on central servers. Remote server was uh, an Ancel, which is hard to run, uh, hard to res. They didn't exactly have lots of credits, but they were forking us really well. You could also put the GFI, oh, sick. <laughs> sick. Man, the disruption, this is so fun. Um, this sort of deck is really, really fun. You have multiple angles of attack, you have the disruption. They got, oh, they drew another GFI the turn that we disassembled it, but they were one credit short. Yeah, they were so close. There was one credit short. It was a fun one. Thanks. Hey, cheers, you too. I'm actually really happy with this list. I was just testing this out to see what would happen if we just played a more fun ability than if we played on the Hoshiko list, which didn't turn out to be actually very, very interesting or even that good. 
And this has actually been really fun. I would actually recommend this. This I turned around really good. A standard is wild right now. And a lot of people are trying to figure out what it is. It's really hard to tell what the meta is. I think we've seen just about everything. We've seen asset spam. We see net damage kills. We see these sort of like prison grinder lists. And um, Alice's ability is like somewhat relevant into all of that. I think, again, you're just losing the um, the consistency to deal with boards and keep your economy up because you're spending slots, you know, interacting and forcing stuff out of hand. But it can be really important and really relevant as much as it generally feels like a luxury and you have to kind of, you know, get the baseline good before you're doing that. But uh, this HB matchup is actually a lot of fun. That's for sure. Thanks so much for watching. Ciao. In that last game, our ability fired once, and yet I still don't feel terrible about it. Like, I do think the fact that this ability has to be respected and it kind of played into the lines of attack we had. Um, I don't feel so bad about it, which is weird considering I'm definitely the sort of Hoshiko over anybody else sort of player. This also made me really reevaluate Essa, right? Like Essa's ability is very close in, in kind of the way it works with this sort of deck, right? Like you have that archives pressure, except I think it's easier for Essa to just jam into a bunch of sabotage cards and have a very consistent pressure over time. I think the biggest issue is I always struggle to build an Essa deck where you play all the Essa core damage cards and then you also struggle to put in an economy package and then you kind of are already at 54 cards and I don't know what to do. I gotta readdress that because I think we're on to something here and it play is really fun as much as sometimes it's hard to sabotage into Jinteki. Of course, all these names here, these are just some of the patrons that help support me and the Metro Grid. A whole lot of time goes into uh, recording and editing, all the behind the scenes stuff too. So I'm hugely thankful for all these folks here that allow this to be a possibility, that I can sink the sort of time into this. Speaking of time, I've been putting a lot of time into an upcoming video. We've been doing some coding. We're gonna have something we were gonna release alongside a very hopefully exciting and interesting video in the next couple of days that I'm working on right now. So stay tuned for that. Enjoy the recommended content. And of course, thanks so much for watching. Yeah.